NCAA Tournament Volleyball on a Saturday night. Into the second round, and what a matchup. The 14th seed BYU Cougars hosting the Utah Utes at the historic Smithfield House in Provo, Utah. BYU with a record of 26 and four. The Utes at 23 and nine after both of those teams survive their opening round matchups. And I choose survive very carefully for Utah in an epic five set thriller against the final four team a year ago, Illinois. The Utes find a way. Amy Gant, the former All-American with me, what'd you think of that first match that we broadcast last night? It was absolutely epic, and I think it just showed that Utah knew what it would take to come out of this particular first and second round. They had to play a very high level against Illinois, and they had a lot of players step up and play their best match. Utah's stars, Danny Drews, Kenzie Kerber doing their thing, and the young one, Zoe Weatherington, also really solid. For the BYU Cougars, we've seen some slow starts to matches this year. Last night, not one of those instances. BYU wins the opening frame 25 to seven and never looked back. I think BYU came out on fire and took advantage of the amazing crowd that is always present in the field house. But to New Mexico State's credit, they definitely bounced back in sets two and three and they came out playing well, but for BYU's part, they really never let go of the control. Now for your updated NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship bracketology in the Provo Quadrant, BYU and Utah competing for a chance to play in the Sweet 16 against the winner of the number three seed Stanford and Cal Poly. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us on BYU TV again, alongside former volleyball standout Amy Gant, I am Spencer Linton. Now the question for Utah, I think, Amy, is what do the Utes have left in the tank after going the distance and playing a match that went almost two hours and 45 minutes? Right, I think for Utah, they've just moved on to the present. Yesterday, they, they were able to celebrate for all about 20 minutes, and then they were preparing for this match, and whatever is in that court, in that small 900 square feet, is where their focus is. They're going to block out the crowd and just focus on their team. It feels like... It's gonna be one of those special nights in this midfield house, just a fantastic ambiance building here. Now, these two teams have met earlier this season, a matchup won by BYU in Salt Lake City up on the hill. How did BYU get it done the first time around? Well, winning in four, but you think of back in September, it almost feels like a lifetime ago. A lot of these changes as they've gone through the conference season, but the outside hitters for BYU and Utah were very critical. McKenna Miller had an amazing match she is going to be big tonight against Utah if they want to come away with the win. Well, wouldn't you know it, the two-star outside hitters for these respective sides are our impact performers tonight. Danny Drews, 27 kills in the first round win against Illinois. Right, and she was a little slow to get going, so that's how amazing and impactful Drews is when she's confident and feeling it. She is unstoppable, and you can watch her all around the court shine. She's an amazing athlete and brings a lot of electric emotion to this Utah team. Did a little bit of everything. Six digs, hit 281, and again, the 27 kills. For BYU, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, McKenna Miller did not disappoint when BYU disposed of the Aggies. I think McKenna Miller just brings a calm consistency regardless of who they're playing or what the stakes are. She's gonna come out and she's gonna deliver. And in this high stakes match, that is NCAA second round, you can expect that she will be the stabilizing factor. She's gonna see a ton of swings on the outside and going up against a big Utah block, she's gonna be responsible to make good choices. I'll call an almost 400 hit percentage with 13 kills, three aces, and four blocks, a complete night. The WCC Player of the Year, hoping that the final game she plays in Provo is a win. The head coach of the Utah Utes in her 30th season is Beth Lanier. 587 wins on her resume. That's almost a 700 win percentage when you compare it to the 270 losses. She is the Pac-12 Coach of the Year. The Utes finished third in a very, very loaded and talented conference. Top 20 team that was on the cusp of hosting their own quadrant in this NCAA tournament. She'll start Drews, Kerber, Kaahaina, Torres, Oblad, Yet, Dorman, and Grace. Very experienced side wearing red tonight. On the BYU sideline, there is the head coach, Heather Olmstead, in her fifth season trying to get BYU back to an eighth consecutive Sweet 16, 143 wins, only 17 losses. It's basically winning nine out of every 10 matches that BYU has played. Knighting Bauer, Robinson.
Johnson, Grimmer, Lake, Eschenberg, and Miller go. And Utah opens things up here in Provo with an ace. I think the start for both these teams is going to be critical because that shows they've kind of steadied in and focused. Can Utah block out this crowd? Can BYU rise and deal with the pressure as well? Ma Megan yet delivered the ace. And look at yet saved that ball. Playable. Well done by Utah in recovery. Grimmer was so good against New Mexico State on the right side of the net. Utah's block handles that. Kerber off the soft block. Robinson, roll shot. No problem for Dorman. Kerber off the BYU block. And Utah takes a 2-0 lead in set number one. Well, and already you can tell just the speed and the tempo that both these teams bring to the floor. These players have to be very quick defensively and then be able to turn it around into offense. Yet, serving a third consecutive point to open up. And Eschenberg is stopped at the net. Look at Kenzie Kerber bringing so much emotion to the floor. She has really come into her own there on the right side. Also, Phoebe Grace doing an excellent job in the middle, getting up and over. Yet will serve to Mary Lake. Miller off hands, and BYU scores their first point of tonight's match. Miller again as she gets that side out and then goes to the back row. I think we're going to see critical positions for BYU that need to play well. The other outside hitter position right now in Nixon and also Grimmer there on the right side. Kerber with the left hand, big swing, and she tools the block beautifully. Nice start for Utah here, 4-1 to one on the road in the second matchup this season between these teams, but obviously this one carries just a little bit more weight. Bree Dorman to Lyman. Big swing by Taylor Ballard Nixon, and that's big for her to open things up with a confident swing. I think confidence is key, especially for Nixon just working her way into that starting position. She can establish herself early. That's also going to open up everyone else on the floor, including the right side. Torres sets Oblad in the middle. And after the initial block, Oblad. Works that ball down to the floor. Five to two, Utah, early in set one. Berkeley Oblad had a critical kill last night against Illinois, out of the back row, serving. She just showed that senior leadership. It was a really epic move that Utah will remember for a long time. It helped them come back and take that victory. Danny Drews, Mary Lake with the dig. Whitney Bauer cross court set right back to Nixon. Through the soft block, Oblad affecting that, and Oblad with a big swing in the middle. You talk about the swing she had from the three-meter line. How often do you see a middle blocker hit it with that much confidence and score from that line? Right, I think she pushed Weatherington out of the way and said, this is mine, I'm taking it. She has that confidence, runs the front court very well, is a very smart blocker. Berkeley Oblad, the super senior in every sense of that phrase. That's hit long by Grimmer. And Utah's lead grows to five, seven to two. What a start for the Utes on the road. Timeout BYU in set number one. BYU Utes. felt like that was in, but at this point, you want to use one of those challenges. Probably not, even if you think it might be in, because it's still too early and you want to save them for later. Utes hitting 571, BYU minus 100, and another ace, the second. Here early in set number one for Utah, nine to two, Utes. Well, a lot of times when you have a team that played a tough match the night before, you could either say, oh, they're going to be tired, or they're ready. They're ready to play. They know what it takes to play at a high level, and they came out firing. Kenzie Kerber after that ace. A service error into the net, and that gives BYU a point to make it 9-3. Kate Grimmer. BYU freshman playing in that opposite position back to serve for the Cougars with the left hand to Yet. Torres will set Drews. Dig from Lyman. Grimmer keeps it alive, and we play on. What an effort from BYU. Torres right back to Drews. Mary Lake with the dig. Ballard Nixon, and not much BYU can do but pass it back over. 
Torres with the dump kill. Sage Hyena Torres with the kill to make it 10-3 Utah. Torres is a player who has gotten so much better over the course of the season. Of course, in the Pac-12, night in and night out, you're responsible to set at a high level. She's come into this new position this year and done an excellent job in the 5-1, really working in different players on the floor. Bauer does a good job to force that ball over. Now BYU will set up on the slide for Knighting. That's handled by Utah's defense, Zoe Weatherington. The push is dug by Lake. Knighting slide. And they'll get Utah for an infraction at the net. Point to BYU on the side out. It's 10-4 Utah. BYU's middles usually have great matches against Utah, and Utah really wanted to dial in and try to slow them down. BYU has two big middles, and it's just a double punch that is really tough to stop. Nixon serving. Weatherington. Lake, no issues. Bauer with the dump kill. Whitney Bauer had a huge night for the Cougars in that win against New Mexico State and gets a big point here early when BYU is struggling to find positive marks. Well, and I think establishing, establishing herself as an offensive threat is going to hold the blockers and really open up the antenna, maybe get some seams. First service error of the match from BYU, courtesy of Nixon. Utah in front by six early, 11-5. Opening set, second round of the NCAA tournament. Winner moves on to the Sweet 16. Berkeley Oblad serving. Bauer, back set, and a stop on Knighting by Zoe Weatherington. Zoe Weatherington is long and big. She touches 10-6. She is a very big block. Good position right there, so there really is no hole to hit into. You gotta go high hands. Robinson receives from Oblad. McKenna Miller overpowers the Utah block of Phoebe Grace and Torres. That makes it 12-6. And Miller again showing that she's just smart with her swings, not trying to find a seam that isn't there and hammer straight down. She's just going to use what's in front of her. Knighting back to serve for the Cougars. To Danny Drews, Torres, quick set, Grace, the tip shot. Opportunity for BYU, it's Miller, and she's blocked again. This time, she can't solve Torres and Grace at the net. But in that particular instance, she's off the net, and that really is a coverable ball. That should be a ball that BYU is able to reset and go again on the outside. Torres back to serve, Utah in front, 13-6. Bauer to Miller. Eschenberg covering. And that's an easy point given up with the ball hanging right over the tape. Tap down for another Utah kill, Phoebe Grace. BYU just really a little sloppy at trying to better the ball. Clear that Utah has come out and taken control offensively. BYU struggling a little bit. McKenna Miller with a cross court kill. And it's so interesting, yes, these two teams know each other very well, but the last time they met was September, and so during this first set, we're going to see both of them just figure each other out and see who can make adjustments the quickest. Torres to Kerber. That's it wide right, and BYU in a rare instance here early in this match with back-to-back -back points. Uh, and serving, of course, Whitney Bauer in that first set last night against... <laughs> Against New Mexico State, she served 16 in a row. <laughs> Unbelievable. Never seen a string like that. She had three aces. Weatherington hits a big, heavy ball off that BYU block tool in the block for another kill. Zoe Weatherington, the freshman, playing like a phenom right now. Well, I think after you've spent a whole season in the Pac-12, you get to NCAAs, you're not a freshman anymore. She's definitely weathered the storm. 15-8, Kate Grimmer. What a stab by yet. And Drew's trying to do what she could with it, sends it off the antenna. Out of bounds on the touch. And that'll be a point for BYU, 15-9. Utah still in control, up by six in set one. You feel a little shift, however, in the momentum. BYU's down, but they seem to have settled in a little bit and have found a groove, but can they fight back in time? Drews through the block of Eschenberg and Grimmer. Danny Drews had 27 kills last night to lead Utah.
Danny Drews had a left-handed outside there on the pin is very unorthodox. She does a really nice job getting to the ball. She has to wait for it to pass her body, and so that's difficult. But she can do it, and she does an excellent job. Eschenberg inside the dig attempt of Bree Dorman, 16-10. Utah hitting 4-12 at this point in the first set to BYU's .095. Eschenberg, as we get a good look at her, the last time these two teams met, she had zero kill or zero errors. Very efficient, seven kills. Oblad. Nice tip by Grimmer to keep it alive. Sent back over by Lake. Oblad in the middle. The block is there for the Cougars again. Drews will try it. Left side off the soft block. Mary Lake, Bauer, and Knighting. BYU cannot capitalize. Torres back to Drews. Another dig by Mary Lake. What a rally. Nixon stuffed by Oblad. Kerber there to help out as well. What a rally by both of these teams. Fantastic effort on both sides of the floor. It's a tough one to finish as we get a good look at that block. Nixon, that's a rough ball. You don't want to swing low because you can see it's coming from behind her. She loses track of the big block in front of her. Back in the Smithfield house, second round NCAA tournament action. BYU and Utah, longtime rivals, once again matched up in the single elimination bracket. A fantastic start for Beth Lanier's squad. Utah leading 17 to 10 and really from the onset have dominated BYU in this head-to-head -head matchup. Right, they have four blocks already in this first set alone. Only one error, so Utah both offensively and defensively really playing well. BYU had seven total errors last night in the sweep of New Mexico State. The Cougars already have six tonight. Grimmer off high hands. The block very effective, and Danny Drews what ups that initial attempt by BYU. She goes high hands out of bounds for another kill. It's 18 10. Jason Shepard, what'd you hear during that last timeout? BYU coaching staff talking to their Cougar players, talking about being too passive. That right now, they're the passive team. They need to be much more aggressive. Also, look for BYU to start swinging a lot higher. Talking about how low well they were swinging and they're swinging right into the block. Thank you, Jason. Maddie Robinson with a big swing at the net. Well, I think there's BYU has a couple of great outside hitters, but neither one has really settled into that starting position. So now Robinson has a chance to kind of shine. Berkeley Oblad on the slide. And it would appear, Amy, right now that Utah can do very little wrong. I think they're doing a really nice job of first ball kill on the side out. And they're also transitioning well. They're playing great defense and their offense is firing. Drews to serve, Utah in control, 19-11, opening set, Robinson. And Maddie Robinson has two quick kills. You have to wonder if Heather Olmstead is gonna look to a young lady that as a freshman a year ago was a big part of BYU making a run to the Final Four. Well, I think that outside hitter position obviously is gonna be critical. And so for Robinson to step in over the last couple weeks, she's really played more of a back roll specialist roll and so wow what a time to come in and have to step up the serve to Kerber and Torres the whistle does blow for a moment we thought that ball might have been popped up but it clearly hit the floor Torres with another dump kill for Utah 20 to 12 and BYU has got to really find some sort of momentum something they could take into the second set that can give them some confidence. Whitney Bauer trying to pay that dump kill back. And from the back line, Danny Drews makes it 21-12. Utah cruising in set one. Drews again out of the back row, so smart. She really works around at attacking corner to corner. Oblad serves to Robinson. Bauer will go cross court to Miller. Tip shot and down for a kill. McKenna Miller. She's got four kills on the match. She's hitting 429. Maddie Robinson successful in her first few swings, but not much else going right for BYU. Heather Knighting to serve now. Received by Drews Torres to Weatherington. There's the first BYU block. Eschenberg and Bauer. Weatherington hits a heavy ball, and Eschenberg in perfect position. 
Love watching how Eschenberg moves and her body position. She presses, doesn't leave a lot of space. She's a tremendous blocker. Torres knighting there. Miller will send it back over. BYU's defense will regroup. Meanwhile, they go to Drews in the back line. Danny Drews. Oh, it's really poetry in motion at times with her coming off that three meter line. Well, you can just see how the defense for BYU is so surprised from Drews coming out of the back row. They're so focused on all the other offensive weapons, which Utah has a ton of, and so that's very tough to keep track. Another block for Utah. Five in the opening set, and the Utah 23-14. Getting there on the outside. See how big Kerber is able to get. On that right side, she's a tall blocker. Torres to serve. To Abby Dayton. Mary Lake will set Miller. Dorman. Back to Torres and Weatherington off BYU hands. It is set point for the Utes. Utah has come out in this first set and not looked back. They haven't opened the door. They've just been pressing and attacking from the very first serve. Service error, and we'll play at least one more point here in the opening frame. And we asked the question at the beginning of the broadcast, how much does Utah have left? And you very uh, aptly pointed out, sometimes a five-set thriller can bring out the best the next night because you're just in the groove. Sometimes you are worn down. Clearly, Utah does not look worn down. No, I think the Pac-12 has gotten them ready for night in, night out of tough matches. Weatherington finishes off a very impressive opening set against BYU, 25-15. The Utes theme this year is whatever it takes. They drew a very good Illinois team in the first round, and now they're being tasked with beating BYU in Provo, which they haven't been able to do three of the last four years. Kenzie Kerber, the junior outside hitter for Utah, off to a quick start like she was last night against Illinois. Three kills on five swings, four digs, and three blocks, Amy Gant. Oh, I think everyone on Utah offensively just really distributing the ball well and getting involved. Kenzie Kerber, so confident there on the right side. She really has become a leader on the floor in all areas, like you said. Your opening set stats show Utah out hitting BYU 433 to 97. And how about five blocks? We told you three from Kenzie Kerber to BYU's one and a couple of aces. Utah did very little wrong in the first set of this match. And it wasn't just one player for Utah. Everyone was able to get involved. And I think that's where Utah really shines is they have a lot of different offensive weapons. They're very solid every area on the floor. Danny Drews with four kills. Kerber with three kills. Zoe Weatherington has three. Berkeley Obled has three kills. Even Sage Kahayana Torres has a couple of kills as the setter. Right, and when your team as a setter, if you're setting your team to a 400 or more hitting percentage, you're doing a pretty good job. BYU and McKenna Miller will try and respond here in set two on their home floor. This obviously pro BYU crowd Hasn't had much to cheer about tonight. But the Utah Red, very boisterous. Miller opens up with a service error, and it's one to nothing Utah. Well, I think that's a great point. This crowd for BYU is one of its biggest assets, and Utah did not allow them to be a factor at all in that first set. Megan yet. Opened this match with an ace. She's back serving. Tip shot from Robinson. Dorman. Kerber well off the net. Another dig from Mary Lake. Bauer. Robinson. Full windup. That's hit wide, right, and long. And Utah, like they did in the opening frame, up two to nothing to begin. I think that's solid. I love watching yet in the back row. She played a lot last year in the front row as well, but then had a stress fracture in her foot and has taken on a defensive role. And she's so calm and smart that it's great to watch her. Essentially a free ball back to the Utes and a miscommunication. Bales BYU out for their first point in set two. Well, BYU needs to get a little confidence themselves to be the aggressor. So far, they've been on the defensive that entire first set, and so it's hard to kind of turn it around. 
Torres outside to Danny Drews. She's got five kills to lead all players thus far. And that shot right there shows how difficult it is to line up on a left-handed outside. You're just not used to it. BYU hasn't seen it before, and their block is just off. Bree Dorman to Lyman, overpass. And Amy, I'm not sure what they called at the net. What happened there? Well, anytime the ball is right in the middle and you have a back row setter, it's got to go one way or the other, either back row attack or over on the block. I think they felt like Utah maybe pressed a little too much and that Whitney Bauer was trying to set that ball. All right. The Cougars take advantage of the infraction. Up 3-2, Kenzie Kerber quickly squelches any momentum from that last play and rockets down her fourth kill. There's again another left-handed swing and it affects how you line up the block. You can see Maddie Robinson way too far on the line based on Kenzie Kerber's approach. Kerber back to serve. Utah leading 4-2, already up, one set to none. Robinson, six blocks in the match already for the Utes. Torres and Oblak. And BYU's definitely in trouble there in that other outside hitter position because both Nixon and Robinson really struggling to get it past that block for Utah. Who's next? Are they going to bring in someone else or are they going to go back to Nixon or let Robinson work her way out of it as she does right there? Robinson now with her third kill. Good swing, nice set again from Bauer to work that out, try to get it fast to keep Oblad from getting out and closing. Robinson taking out some frustration on that last swing. It's 5-3. Yet receives the serve. Torres on the slide. Oblad once again. Berkeley Oblad with her fourth kill, and it's 6-3 Utah in the second set. Oblad is a very good slide hitter, and when you can hit the slide well, it allows you to pick up the ball at any point so she can look at the defense and decide where she's going to hit it. Bauer to Miller. Off the block. Torres, another slide from Oblad. She just mishits that one long. Frustrating for her because a great set from Torres. No block up for BYU. They get a gift right there as Utah keeps it close within two, but have yet to really find that confident flow that they've been missing. Knighty. Tough serve, handled by Kerber. Weatherington. That ball is punished off the BYU block. It looked like it went off somebody's forehead. It definitely hit Eschenberg right in the face, and anytime Weatherington hits, it's going to be powerful. 7-4 Utes, so glad to serve. Robinson takes that, Bauer knows where Miller is. Great pass from Robinson, keeping her team in system. And whenever you get that pass up to the net, you can see how it kind of holds the blockers. They don't know exactly where to go. They can't release early. And that opens up seams, especially when that quick set is moved out to the outside. Whitney Bauer serving. She had three aces last night from the back. We watched a fantastic display of back row attacks between Utah and Illinois last night. Now Utah is showing it to BYU. And you can see BYU not even aware it's going on. They have to make that adjustment. They have to be aware of the front row hitters, but also Drews because she is a prime target. Grimmer can't get through Grayson Weatherington. Miller off the net. Forced tip shot. Torres will set Kerber. There is the BYU block when the Cougars needed it most and makes it 8-6. Getting through that rally in Eschenberg again, moving so well along the net, closing that down. Miller to Drews. Weatherington, tip shot. Grimmer all the way over to cover that. They go back to Weatherington, who lines up a big swing, and the BYU block is there with Robinson. Now off the net, Weatherington is dug by Lake. Bauer to Robinson. Soft block, Torres outside, Kerber. You can sense how powerful this Utah offense is in that rally right there. Pin to pin, Weatherington, Kerber. So much pressure, especially Eschenberg, having to get out and get involved in both of those swings. It's difficult. 
Robinson receives. Well off the net. How about that for a confident, difficult swing from Maddie Robinson? Exactly, out of system play on a pass that she passed. So it, she had to make the transition quickly from receiving and then going into offensive mode. A really smart swing from Robinson out of system. Cross court from Torres to Drews. Beautiful tooling of that block. And it's 10-7 Utah. Danny Drews now with seven kills to lead all players. Just such a powerful offense. Utah continues to fire away. BYU never has a chance to take a breath because they're being attacked from all angles. In the middle, 90. It would really help BYU if they could get Heather Knighting going. Any of those middles, exactly. That offense in the middle, they're so dominant. Two, six, four middles who are very, very good. First team, all conference players and great blockers on their own, but the offense has got to be distributed to everyone on the floor. Abby Dayton to serve. Goes to Drews. Torres opts for Kerber. Kenzie Kerber on fire right now. Terrific swing, terrific set, really setting up Kerber. You see in her approach the confidence that she's feeling. Six kills, five digs, three blocks for Kerber. She's serving to Mary Lake. Bauer opts for Robinson. Robinson's another player. Like you said, you watch her approach and you can see the power in it. She gets so much out of it and works so hard getting off the net, keeping it nice and high to avoid that block. Utah holding on to that two or three point lead for the majority of this second set, and they push it back up to three with Danny Drews, 12-9. I think the reason is, is that Utah has been able to side out at such a high level. It is first ball kill. They're getting a pass and then getting a kill right away. We haven't seen a lot of long rallies in this second set. Utah siding out at 88%, Amy. Joust at the net. Bauer wins the initial one with Oblad, but it ends up on the Utah side, and Berkeley Oblad extends the lead to four. Timeout, BYU. The initial joust, obviously, won by the setter, but then Utah able to turn that around, and Oblad again finding that back line. We talked about Kenzie Kerber coming out of the last timeout, and her teammate Danny Drews is actually out hitting Kerber. Eight kills on 14 swings, 571. The stars have really shown tonight for Utah. Right. Zero errors, and especially out of the back row as well. Wanted Danny Drews. It was important for Utah to have her come out confident. Definitely she has been. Drews serving, and she offered up the serve, but apparently had not received the official clearance. Now she has it. And we'll start again with Utah leading 13-9, midway through the second set. Drews nearly an ace. Dayton does a good job just to keep that alive. But Torres is having a career night in the kill category. She's got three. And it's that same kill over and over and over, just right over the top of the block. Heather Knighting at 6-4, if she could just keep her arms up a little bit on that play, it's difficult because you're looking to move. But I think that would slow down Torres. 90. Oblad, tip shot on the slide. Bauer there. Miller pushing, Drews digging. Torres, four kills from her center position. Into that exact same spot again. You could put an X on the floor where Torres is putting it. Great defensive effort from BYU, but so smart for Torres to come right back because the defense for BYU hadn't been able to get back to base and get reset. Bauer, set Miller. Not much of a block up there for McKenna Miller. It was quick to the outside, good set from Bauer. She pushes it all the way to the antenna and Torres stuck way inside. Leaves a ton of court open. 15-10, Utah for a second straight set has built a sizable lead and the service there will make it 16-10. And because Utah has been so good at side out offense, I think they've really put themselves in a good position because right now all they have to do is maintain just that side out play. McKenna Miller 
Down the line, Kerber handles it. Back line, Danny Drews. BYU has no answer for Danny Drews. Nine kills still, zero errors. So much power and control everywhere on the floor. Just too many weapons right now for Utah. Oblad. Eschenberg can't score from the middle. Oblad. Eschenberg setting. A bump set from Mary Lake from McKenna Miller and a dig by Oblad. Weatherington wide left. Point to BYU. Good effort, good fight again. And for BYU to try to slow down this amazing offense that Utah's put together, they've got to really take some chances behind the service line. You've got to disrupt the passing lanes and slow down the slow offense. Down. Bauer, Kerber, a tip shot from Grace, nearly scored. Miller off the net. High hands, Drew's there. Torres will set Weatherington, pushes. Dug by Lake from the back line. Robinson, her roll shot. No problems again for that Utah defense. Drews from the back line. Eschenberg and a free ball back to Utah. Kerber to Torres, the slide from Grace. What a beautiful tip shot by Phoebe Grace. It's 18-11. The traditional heavyweight has been punched in the mouth. Well, you could see particularly in that rally just how Utah maintained the offensive pressure over and over and over. BYU's trying to keep it going, but can't return the favor. 18-11, Utah in the second set, already up one set to none. All Utah thus far in the second round of this NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship matchup. They lead by seven, threatening to go up two sets to none. Jason Shepard, what do you have for us? Certainly there's a lot left to play in this second set, but if Utah were to go on and win set two and take a two sets to none lead over BYU, it would be the first time since September of 2016 that BYU would find itself down two sets to none at home. The team that they faced in that game in September of 2016, the University of Utah. So the Utes have done this before, that match would go to five sets where Utah would win 15-13 in set number five, Spencer. A great point, Jason Shepard. BYU gets the point they need out of the timeout. Big hill to climb, trailing 18-12. Well, and especially against the Utah team, that is perfect, perfect in the second set in scoring out of um, side out. I've never seen that before. They are 12, 13 for 13. 100% side out. Incredible. Kenzie Kerber tack on another kill to her stat sheet. Nine for Drews, seven for Kerber, five for Oblad, four for Weatherington. Balanced offense. It has been beautiful for Utah. Robinson off the block. Dorman in the right place. Danny Drews blocked for one of the few times tonight. Stab dig by Bauer, Robinson will line it up, and she is blocked by Grace and Kerber. 20 to 12, Utah. This Utah team is on a mission. You said it before, they've talked all season about whatever it takes. This is a team who has played 13 five-set matches. They have been through the grinder all season long come out stronger and are ready to take it in the NCAA tournament. Megan yet to Robinson. Bauer, quick set, Eschenberg. Dorman there. But her attempt punched out of bounds and a kill for BYU and Eschenberg, 20 to 13. Utah won the opening set, 25-15. Lake, float serve. Yet there, Torres will set Kerber. And these are beautiful sets. Not a significant block from BYU, and Kerber is taking advantage. Right, so it starts with the pass. Obviously, Utah able to get that pass up to the net, but then credit Torres, who's creating a beautiful offense, giving her hitters great swings with a lot of court to hit into. Nixon, dug by Torres. Look at those passes. This is crazy. Kerber hits it wide right, but still. 
I think when you're confident in serve receive, you feel like you can take some chances in other areas. It becomes kind of like a men's game when everything is blasted, everyone sides out at a high level. So you can go back and hammer the serve and, and really feel confident to push the level. Utah out blocking, out hitting, out digging, out playing BYU. Dorman robs Bauer. And they call double contact on Danny Drews. Interesting, I think she just had so much power on that swing. On that set, it looked more like a swing. But it certainly was clean. 21-15, Nixon to Drews, overpass. Kept alive by Oblad, Kerber trying to clean it up and she does out of system. Twenty-two, fifteen, Utah sprinting, it would seem, to a two sets to none lead. Not a great pass from Bauer on the slide for Knighting. Drews dug by Lyman. Bauer pushes to Megan yet. Back line from Kerber through the block of Knighting and Robinson, 23-15. BYU really struggling to even find an opening. We get a good swing, good up from Lyman. But again, I think Utah is just swinging at such a high level. Every player on the floor is hitting their stride. It's really tough to defend against. Kenzie Kerber with her second ace. She's having an unbelievable night. 10 kills, now two aces, eight digs, four blocks. 24-15, Utah with a second set point. Dayton to Bauer. Robinson blocked by the Utes. Eight blocks for Utah. Such a solid performance in two very powerful sets for Utah. BYU still looking a little shell-shocked. How long is this going to continue? Can we open the door and fight our way in? But so far, Utah has just been way too good. Utah has been on the short side against BYU so often, but now they hold a two sets to none lead. Jason Shepard is with BYU coach Heather Olmstead. Coach, you find yourself in an unfamiliar situation. Where does your biggest concern lie right now? Yeah, we're not playing well at all, so we got an uphill battle from here. We got a serve and pa pass way better, so we're, we're serving way too easy for their, their offense. They're really good, and they're firing on all cylinders, so if we can't turn that around, you know, we're going to be in trouble. We'll you, be in trouble. You know your team better than anybody else. How do you expect them to respond in set three? Yeah, I would hope fearlessly, but um, we got to figure some things out. So we'll, we'll do our best right here and see what happens. Thanks, Heather. Thanks. Jason Shepard with Heather Olmstead, understandably a frustrated head coach. And BYU's got some serious things to figure out if they're going to play more than one more set this season. Coming back. And hard to be upset with anything that her side has done tonight. Utah dominating the first two sets, 25-15, 25-15. Alongside Amy Gann, I'm Spencer Linton. That was Jason Shepard talking with the Utah head coach. And uh, let's just go ahead and drive the point home a little bit further <laughs> with these match statistics. Utah out hitting BYU in the first two frames, 382 to 131. Out digging, out blocking, out acing, out everything. Well, it's very rare that every aspect of your game is rolling and that every single player on the floor is having a night. But Utah definitely has come out laser focused. I talked to Coach Lanier prior to the match and she seemed as focused as I've ever seen her. She said, we are only concerned about the next point right away. We're not looking behind. We're not looking ahead. This is what we're focused on. And they've been thinking about it and pre preparing for it all season long. This is a team in Utah who has their highest finish in one of the best conferences in the country, third in the Pac-12, and it is no fluke. It's not that the Pac-12 was having a bad uh, down year. It is that Utah is a fantastic volleyball team. The Utes, if it happens, 
And we think it will want another shot at Stanford. Of course, the Cardinal got to take care of Cal Poly. But the winner here most certainly will take on the number three overall seed in the country. And for BYU, hey, it's 0-0 in this third set. It's been done before. They've got a big hill to climb. It's got to start with really tough serving. And mentally, BYU has really got to refocus and find a way to go on the offensive. What do they have left in the emotional tank? Well, there's an overpass pushed over the net and out of bounds. An ace for Megan Yet. In the first set, BYU started by getting aced. In the second set, BYU started by missing a serve. And here in the third set, being aced again on the first point. Knighty through that block of Grayson Drews, but handled Yet from the back line. And that's off Knighting. Two to nothing, Utah. what Utah is doing a great job of is allowing their team multiple opportunities. Even when balls aren't dropping initially, the defense is picking it up. McKenna Miller, long point Utah, three to nothing. And this is where BYU is going to feel a little frantic. They're going to feel like they've maybe got to press and go for it a little too hard when maybe the shot isn't there. It just doesn't seem that BYU is there mentally tonight. Whitney Bauer scores the dump kill. I think to Utah's credit, they haven't opened the door. And BYU, you've got to find room to be on the offensive. If you're constantly back on your heels getting attacked again and again and again, it's really hard to get your bearings. Ace for Heather Knighting. Is that the point that can inspire this crowd? and lift the home BYU Cougars to push for a fourth set. It definitely has to start with the serve on that BYU side. Drews, Torres, and Kerber forced to set it back over. Bump set from Robinson to Miller, blocked, but over the net on the cover. Miller, what a dig by Doherman. Drews through the block, kept up by Bauer. Miller one more time off the block, yet they're covering on the very back row, Danny Drews. This Utah team is not going to give BYU anything. Right, every single point needs to be hard fought and earned. Great rally, but as often has been the case tonight, the rally won by Utah. Miller, roll shot, easy for Torres. Dorman, bump set, Danny Drews. And that is in. Now will Heather Olstead challenge this call? She will not. 5-2 Utah. Dorman back to serve. Yeah, we haven't seen a challenge all match long. Yet there. Dorman. That's Drews. And Robinson can't handle it. You can see Coach Olmstead talking to her team, telling Whitney Bauer, try to set it a little quicker to the outside to McKenna Miller, trying to open up some sort of seam in the block. But the block for Utah has been so solid. Berkeley Oblad moves very quick laterally and is getting out and closing it down. Six to two, Utah. The Utes, Danny Drews, Kenzie Kerber just overpowering the Cougars. Kennedy Eschenberg. The block has been so effective for Utah, even when they don't score an official point. Tip shot from Oblad, Bauer is there. Bump set late to Miller. Soft block, right back to Drews. Another amazing dig by Lake, and BYU pay it off. Miller cannot do so. Bauer right back to McKenna Miller, pushes it down the line. Utah's defense has been just spectacular. Kerber, another dig by Lake. And a free ball back from Miller to the Utes. Torres, Oblad! Wow. That was a really nice rally on both sides of the floor. But if you look at where BYU is, making incredible ups, but because they're forced to give free balls back to Utah over and over and over again, eventually Utah's going to get it done. 
Not much to cheer about on BYU TV if you're a BYU fan, but for the Utah Utes, this has been a glorious performance to this point. Up two sets to none, 25-15, 25-15. They lead 7-2 here in set three. And BYU just cannot score. Blocked again. Well, and it's so interesting to watch how every aspect of the Utah game is going well. Beautiful block from Oblad getting over there to close it down, coming off an amazing dig from Bree Dorman. And the wheels are really starting to fall off for the Cougars. Well, you can just feel the press. When you have a team like Utah who's shutting down all your best swings, when you can't find a rhythm, that's when things start to get a little frantic and you start to take chances that maybe you shouldn't. Nine to two Utah in set three. Pacing for a sweep on the road in the NCAA tournament. Eschenberg finally able to tool the block and BYU sides out. And look at Mary Lake trying to urge her team forward. She's cheering, looking at everyone. She's been such a great leader for this team her entire career. And as that great libero, this is her opportunity as she tries to urge them to make a run. Drews finds a spot. Danny Drews, 13 kills. Hitting well over 400. One error, five digs. But for me, Amy, the story really has been Kenzie Kerber. I mean, as good as Drews has been, Kerber still in the show. Yeah. Eschenberg down for BYU. Her second kill here in set three. Mary Lake, the senior for BYU, and her best friend, West Coast Conference player, the McKenna Miller, trying to show some leadership and inspire some type of rally here late. Miller, no problems for yet. Drews with the push. Bauer is there. Mary Lake will set Kate Grimmer, and she is roofed again. Drews and Oblad, 11 to 4. Utah now with 10 blocks to BYU's three. I don't know how you could even pick one person on this Utah squad. <laughs> Each one of them working together well, feeding off each other, bettering the ball, supporting each other, and it has worked so well. Quick set from Bauer to Eschenberg. Hard not to think too little too late for BYU. A great swing from Eschenberg. Like you said, a one-on-one -on -one situation, but that passing has not been there. The serving has not been there. And when you can't attack the ball from the beginning, you're in big trouble. Weatherington overpowers Knighting and Grimmer. Knighting trying to get over there and close, but it's too fast to the outside, and her right arm just doesn't get over the net. 12-5. Nixon, long and wide right. All they're going to say was a touch, so that is a sign out to BYU, 12-6. We've become so accustomed to these long runs by BYU when they go on the five to nothing run or a seven to nothing run. BYU hasn't even been able to string together three consecutive points right. tonight against Utah. I think Utah. they are in a situation, BYU, that they have not been in all season long and maybe for years and years. And it is something you've got to dig your way out of. And Utah's just not giving them the time to do that. A rare error from Utah. Gives the Cougars back-to-back -back points, 12-7. Weatherington will try and side out for the Utes. Perhaps here is a 3-0 run for BYU. Tip shot. What a pancake dig by Dorman. We play on. Bauer, Knighting, blocked again. And Bauer will go back to Nixon. Blocked and down. Heather Olmstead's going to challenge that the ball hit the floor earlier on the initial slide by Heather Knighting. Bree Dorman got that pancake dig earlier. We'll get a good look to see if it was indeed up. Dorman, one of the best players. Oh, I don't know. I, does it hit right of her hand? It's interesting where that lies. We'll get a good look here. So this is Nixon off the block, which finalized the point. We're going to have to go back to a higher angle and see what happens on that initial contact from Knighting on the tip shot. 
if that ball found any part of the floor. We couldn't tell from the previous angle. Oh, Here we go. This is this is the look. Great angle. And that ball oh. clearly hits the floor. That's a good clearly. challenge. Well, and what's interesting is the rotation of the ball comes up almost like Dorman did get her hand on it because there's a little bit of backspin. Well, and if you look at the angle that is from the up official, she is on the left side of Dorman, and so it looks like she got it up, but then you had Heather Olmsted on the right side who could see that that ball hit the floor. This is a critical opportunity that BYU has got to take advantage of. Getting that ball back, they are only down four, but this is the time. If BYU is going to make a run here and extend their season, it has to be now. Three nothing run for the Cougars to pull within four at 12-8. Kate Grimmer will serve with the left hand. Drews from the back. Cover. Bauer to Lake. Bump set, Nixon blocked, down on the line. What a response from Utah. The Cougars had the door open to make it four straight points and could not close it. Right, forcing an overpass that they couldn't turn around and get the point on. Thirteen eight. Nixon. And that's wide. I think this is really hard for BYU in that outside hitter position. Just really struggling between Robinson and Nixon to find somebody who can consistently get the job done. Free ball back to the Utes after another tough serve. Torres, Kerber, and that's inside of Mary Lake. 14 to eight. Welcome back to the Smithfield House in Provo, Utah. The second round of the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. Longtime rivals, BYU and Utah. And this time around, it has been dominated. And I don't know if I can find a stronger word. If I can, then I'll blurt it out. But right <laughs> now, it's just been complete and utter domination from Utah. Up two sets to none. One bulk of the first two sets by a score of 25-15 and now lead 15-8. Here in set number three, Whitney Bauer with the dump kill. And the Cougars are desperate to find any type of positive emotion and consistency. It's a great job from Bauer to get them out of that rotation. Now McKenna Miller's rotated into the front row. This is an opportunity for them to score some points, work their way back into this third set. It's going to take something extra special. Weatherington. <laughs> you said this during the first round match, but Beth Lanier coached volleyball a long time and Amy she told you that Weatherington hits the ball harder than she's ever seen anybody hit it yeah that's a very very bold statement for a coach to make but when you watch Weatherington especially as she starts to get going she has a cannon for an arm Miller from Bauer 16-10 the magic number for Utah is nine points they have lost to BYU in the tournament three of the last four years. And the seniors on this Utah side want so badly to go to the Sweet 16. Drews, Danny Drews, 14 kills, makes it 17-10. Danny Drews hammering out of the backcourt. You see Heather Knighting. Getting her bell rung a little bit as that ball ricochets off Robinson's arms. Timeout. To mop the floor a little bit. Heather Knighting being checked out. See the frustration mounting on her face. It's more than just the immediate pain and discomfort she's dealing with. Dorman, I mentioned the Utah seniors. She is a critical one for this Utah side. Kennedy Eschenberg gets the touch and a kill. 17-11. Eschenberg has been really the lone bright spot in terms of offense for BYU. Seven kills on 12 sinks. She's hitting 503 blocks. 
not many, nobody else really helping her out. Torres, oh that, oh, and that was probably gonna go long. An uncharacteristic mistake from Mary Lake. 18-11. Yeah, probably sensing there may have been a touch on that ball, but you can feel the urgency as Utah gets closer and closer to that 20-point mark. BYU has got to make a run right now or it will be too late. Grimmer. No touch, point Utah. Down to six points from the Sweet 16 for Utah. Kerber, 11 kills, two aces, eight digs, five blocks, and now serving, and there is an error into the net. It's not impossible, but the way Utah's playing, it feels like it for BYU. Right, they have not opened the door. Miller serves Kerber, Dorman, the bump set, Drew is off the net. That's how it's gone. I mean, even when Utah doesn't have the prototypical perfect in-system offense running with a perfect set, they've got Danny Drews to clean anything up. Well, and I think the BYU block focused too much on the line blocking their left so much cross-court open for Drews to hit into. Nixon. Tip shot, score. Berkeley Oblad, another of those Utah seniors. Such a great story from Oblad. She injured her arm last year and was out the entire season. Wasn't sure if she was gonna come back for this extra senior season. She's actually graduating in December. Gonna be done, this is her last bit, but they are so happy she came back to this team. The block from Eschenberg and Nixon, 21-13 Utah. Kennedy Eschenberg with a superlative performance for BYU tonight. And she is taking on a buzzsaw right now. Weatherington off the block, pancake, and will play on for the moment. Weatherington one more time, and she's stuffed by Grimmer and Knighty. Back-to-back -back blocks for BYU. BYU. Great job from Lyman, miscommunication and terrific end. And what was a free ball that Utah should have finished? Grimmer gets the block. Drews back line. Danny Drews, 16 kills, 22-14. Utah three points away from the Sweet 16. We talk so much about the offense for Utah, but that does not happen unless you have a pass up to the net and the Utes have passed so well throughout the entire match. Nixon blocked by Torres and Phoebe Grace. 12th block of the night for Utah. Magic number down to two. What a performance from the Utes. My goodness. BYU trying to get that floor swept, but also just needs a breather to try to reset, keep their season alive for just a few more points as we look at Mary Lake, one of the best players to come out of BYU. Tremendous libero has been such an inspiration and fan favorite her entire four years. BYU so lucky to have Lake on this team, creating that culture and legacy. What a career. Absolutely an all-timer. She's gone over 400 digs for the season. She's been very busy tonight with 14 digs. Drews. Lake was there, and it is match point. Utah one point away from closing out the sweep and moving on in the bracket. Drews again out of the back row. She has been so fantastic. She's hitting 457, Kerber 421, Oblad 467. Match point. Knighting. Torres there. Weatherington can't finish it off. Weatherington will try again. It's Utah with the sweet tooth tonight. 
Utah came out as focused as I've ever seen them. They did not look back from the first serve of the first set. BYU had no answer the entire match. An unbelievable performance from the youths. The freshman Zoe Weatherington finishes off BYU with her seventh kill. And Utah moves on to the Sweet 16. Whatever it takes. And they have figured it out finally in Provo against BYU.